I have a feeling that this watch will go down in Seiko history as one of the few collectibles from this era of Marine Master 200, and among the last few party to be collectible as well. The reason being, number one, the bicolor aluminum Pepsi bezel that will age gracefully, and number two, the simplicity of the dial. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any reviews, head to head or quick time, and follow me on Instagram and come along with me on my watch collecting journey. With the release of the new generation of Marine Master 200, which received a price hike of around 30 to 35% at MSRP, these first generation suddenly became very enticing, especially at the market price of around 500 to 550 US dollars, compared to the market price of around $1,000 to $1,200 of the new generation, there is immense value to be had here. Despite the name Baby Marine Master, there is a huge difference between this and the MM300 line. Let's look at those differences and uniqueness in detail. As always, we start with the case design. It is clear from first look that this watch is inspired by the design language from past Seikos and the Marine Master 300 line but at a much, much more accessible price point. Therefore, cost has been cut and we cannot reasonably expect the quality to match something that is priced four to five times more than this. The case finishing on this watch is more similar to what you would find on a cheaper prospect line, like the Turtle or the Mini Turtle, especially when we look at the brushing, which is quite shallow and not as well defined. But when we turn our attention to the polishing, we see a bit of a step up. They're not quite Zaratsu, but they are a step up from the turtle line and looks more mirror-like. The transition between finishes are clean but not sharp. There is no visible bleeding of finishes between surfaces and transition is more rounded than angular, giving this watch a more pleasing and soft look. The case flare out at the midsection and then tuck in nicely and sharply making it sink well into the well of your wrist. And as with any other prospect designated dive watch, it has a drill lock hole making it easy to swap straps and you'll definitely want to do that. More on that in the strap section of this review. Turning the watch over, we see a familiar screw down case back with the Seiko Tsunami Wave emblem with the word special etched on top of it. Nothing much to see here. So let's flip the watch again to look at more interesting things on the front. The watch has a flat sapphire crystal which is highly high reflective, giving you a clear view onto that dial. One interesting fact about the crystal is that it is done really close to the dial, making the dial appear really, really flat. Unlike other dive watches you find in the market, which has a thicker glass and a porthole-like look down onto the dial. The crown here is unsigned, as usual, from Seiko of this era. Treading is quite shallow too, more shallow than I'm used to from other dive watches, making me think that there's some sort of manufacturing defect on it. I'll update in the description if I ever find out. Operating the crown is the usual Seiko affair. The first position, after you unscrew the crown, allows you to wind the watch. The second allows you to change the date, and the third allows you to change the time. Pretty straightforward. Moving on to the dial, as said before, this dial is flat. It is a flat matte black dial, simple and clean. Usually on a dial like this, it is quite easy to mess up because just a tiny speck of dust will easily show. But this example is very clean. At normal viewing distance, you will not pick up any dust particles on the dial. The markers are pressed from the underside and filled with loom. It is the typical circle and rounded rectangular shape markers you see on other Seiko divers. Each marker is bordered by a shiny polished metal edge that gives this flat dial its sparkle. The handset are the same found on the Marine Master Tuna, second generation I reviewed earlier. It is a sword and shield kind of handset with the outer hand resembling a broad arrow shield and the minute hand resembling a sword. So much Pokemon sword and shield reference right here. The base of these two hands are matte black like the dial making it so the hand seems to float on the top of the dial. The second hand is done in red, which matches the bezel. And because it is red, it contrasts nicely with the black dial. It too seems to float on top of the dial because the base of the second hand is black. And at the end of the hand, we find a lollipop style loom fill dot. The printing on this dial is something I feel like touching upon. I've never owned a party special edition before and never realized that Seiko would move the prospect logo up to be under the Seiko logo. And in its place, we would find the party logo, which sits proudly above the automatic and diver 200 text. For this generation of Marine Master 200, Seiko also went so far as to border the date window with crisp white printing that brings back symmetry to the dial. 
Moving on to the loom, Seiko applied two distinct colors of loom on this watch, blue and green. The green color that we are used to is applied onto the minute hand. The rest receives a blue hue loom that reminds me of the Longjing Hydro Conquest loom color. Despite the age of this watch, it was manufactured around 2018, it still lasts all night. Onto the dimension of this watch. This watch has a diameter of 44mm, a lock to lock descent of 49mm, thickness of about 13.1mm, and a lock width of 20mm. The watch comes equipped with the infamous 6R15 movement and beats at about 21,600 vibrations per hour with a power reserve of 50 hours. These movements were known for being really inaccurate and the quality issues seems to be a hit or miss on this one. But mine luckily runs fine. Well enough that I do not have to reset the watch after a week of wear. They were upgraded to the 6R35 found in the Alfinis line. Review here. Let's move on from the infamous stuff to the famous stuff, the bezel. It is done in Pepsi style color scheme. I now understand the appeal it has. The fiery red next to the cool blue presents a beautiful juxtaposition in design that is timeless in nature. The fact that this is an aluminum insert bezel is also a big plus. As it fades, your watch will take on new life. It's kind of like bronze in a way because as you use it, it's gonna age. The bezel has got coin edging around, making it easy to grip and turn. The action is typical Seiko, alternating between soft and loud click. Let's hear it. The bezel on the sample lines up perfectly with the hash marks and there's no back play. Next up, the strap. It comes with a Marine Master 300 style rubber strap which has the same perforation on the underside. But the whole thing is definitely made out of cheaper material because it is a lint magnet. So just throw it away and switch to this cheap Tropic FKM strap you can find on AliExpress and that's the end of the story. On the wrist, this watch is very compact and comfortable. Everything feels well proportioned as a watch should be. I see myself getting a third party bracelet for it in the near future, probably from strap code. That should enhance the wearing experience by quite a bit. One grab I have about this watch is the freakishly large gap on the underside of where the crown meets the case. Here is me hoping that this is not just specific to my example. I hate dealing with returns and exchanges. Overall, I cannot wait for the bezel on this watch to age and the dial to fade. And that motivates me to go ahead and wear it as often as possible. I can't wait to see what Seiko does with the new versions of Paddy. I hope they don't overdo it and keep it subtle like this one. But be warned, I would not pay more than 600 USD for it. So if you find it cheaper than that, then grab one before it's gone. Stay tuned for my next video and don't forget to like, subscribe and share this review with your friends. Follow me on Instagram and see you next time. Peace.